All right, everybody. Well, let's meet Jane. Jane is the newest member of our team, and she just got assigned to managing our credentials, which need to be rotated on a regular basis. And Jane decides to get started right away. So she logs into the application and starts to look around because it's the first time she's actually playing with it. So she logs in, she sees that there's multiple modules. She goes into the user screen, sees there's a couple of users there and there's a detail screen and all the other modules are pretty much the same. So she figures she's gonna be done by lunchtime. But as she looks on the back end, she hits a little bump on the road because this application is actually built on microservices. And each one of those microservices is attached to its own database. It's also attached to a broker, uh, which is running NATS and is even using cache. So at the end of the day, she has to manage 22 username and passwords. Furthermore, she realizes that the services are managed by independent teams. And the thought about having to coordinate with all these teams and meet with them and discuss the changes on a regular basis makes her feel like this. So our mission is to help Jane by centralizing the credential management and do it in a way that doesn't change any of the existing code that the team has written. So I'll be your guide in this mission. I'm independent tech architect, developer and everything in between. And the application we're using for a demo is the one I built during my 2020 pandemic induced vacation. And this application, which is the one we just played with, runs on Kubernetes and reads all its credentials from environment variables. Now we will focus on the, the user service initially, but we'll extend it to all the services eventually. So if you look at the user, environment, user service environment variables, we see that there are two that we need to store in both, the Postgres connection string and the broker address which is the connection string to NATS. All right, so how are we gonna do this? Well, we're gonna take advantage of the fact that application runs in Kubernetes and we talk about Kubernetes more for those that are not that familiar with it. But basically what we want is whenever we deploy to Kubernetes our application or whenever we restart it, Vault will do some magic and automatically pull the secrets and deploy them to the container that will be running our service as an environment variable so that it can connect to the database. Now, if we look at it in some more detail, we'll see that we'll take advantage of the agent injector that's installed in Vault along with Vault when you install Vault using the Helm chart. And the injector is actually gonna take advantage of some factors that are gonna be added to our user deployment is gonna use that to look up our secrets and it's gonna create an init container. And for those that are not familiar with containers, an init container is basically a setup script that runs before your main application or main service runs. So the role of this init container will be to create a secret file or a file that contains secrets to be more exact that will contain our, our secret values and that our app container will use to create environment variables that then our service can use to connect to the database. And this looks and sounds complicated, but we'll walk through it in the next few slides. All right. So let's start with Vault. As I mentioned, the agent injector is already pre-installed when you install Vault. So let's see the actual configuration of Vault. The first thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna create a new secret uh, engine, which will be key value pairs that will contain our, our secrets. Then we'll enable the Kubernetes authentication that will communicate with Kubernetes. And we'll provide some tokens and certificates that will allow uh, Vault and Kubernetes to talk and Vault to execute commands in Kubernetes. 
So that's all we need to do configure vault. Now let's actually talk about our secrets. And the first thing we need to do is create actual secrets. So in this case, we're gonna be creating the NATS credentials for our user service. Then we'll create a policy that will allow us to read the secrets we just created. And finally, we'll create a role for our Kubernetes authentication called GoTemp user service that will use the policy, GoTemp user service policy that we just created that will allow us to once again run or read our credentials. And that will also communicate with Kubernetes for services that are running with a particular service account name. And in this case, the service account name is GoTemp user service. It will also interact in just the default namespace, which is what we're specifying down here. And that's all we need to do with Vault. So let's take a look at that. So I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna pull Vault up. And we see that this is an empty Vault just with the default stuff that comes out of the box. And I'm gonna pull up the code. And we can see I have a setup script dot sh uh, that takes a vault token and that has the same code that we saw on the screen when we're configuring uh, the secrets and the authentication method then i have another script called user service sh that also takes a vault token and that's configured to create our NAT secret but also the secret for our postgres database then we have the creation of our vault policy. And I've actually pulled the policy into its own file so it's easier to maintain. And we can see that that has allows read capabilities for our Postgres secret and read capabilities for our NAT secret for our user service. And finally, we see the command to create our role for Kubernetes authentication. All right. So let's run those two commands and let's take a look at it in Vault. Copy and paste. I'm gonna to go to the terminal. I'm gonna run the command and we see that it's finished successfully. So let's go and take a look in Vault. So right now, if I go to the policies, we can see our policy has been created. If I go to secrets, we see that there's a new secret engine that contains the, the secrets for our database, for example, Postgres user service, and that contains our credentials. And this is my public repo credential, but you usually shouldn't show this to anybody, uh, but that's okay for us. And in fact, I can go ahead and do the same thing for all our services. I've created a script that is basically has the exact same information as our user service scripts, but for all our services. I'm gonna run that. And you can see that it's creating all our passwords and credentials. So if I go back up here, now I can see that all of our uh, credentials have been organized properly. And you can organize it any way you want, but this is a nice way to help Jane manage all the databases independently. And we can see the policies as well. And we can also see the Kubernetes authentication method that has been created. And we can see the configuration that has been set up. And we're gonna look at the one that we set up for our user service. And we can see that it's bound to the Kubernetes service account, GoTemp user service, which we will create in a second. And it's gonna be using the Kubernetes default namespace. And finally, it's also bound to our GoTemp user service policy that we create in Vault. All right, so this is all we need to create in Vault. So next, let's move on to Kubernetes. And there's three things that we'll have to deal with in Kubernetes annotations, service accounts, and namespaces. 
The namespace will use the default namespace, so we don't have to worry about it. So we'll have to create the next two. But before we get into that, for those that are not very familiar on how to deploy applications to Kubernetes, let's talk about that for a second. We start with our app code, then we package that in an image. In this case, it's a Docker image. Then we run an instance of an image as a container and that container is run inside of a pod, which is the container execution engine inside of Kubernetes. That is run and wrapped into a replica set, which takes care of how many instances of our application we want to run. And finally, that's set and wrapped inside of a deployment that handles all the restarts and updates and rollbacks of our application. And 90% of the time, you always deploy applications into Kubernetes using a deployment, and you don't normally use it, a pod or a replica set by themselves. Now, how do you actually deploy to Kubernetes? Well, you deploy using a YAML manifest that describes our desired state. And this is, this, this is a small portion of our user service YAML manifest. And we're gonna walk through it real quick. We can see that at the bottom, it has the definition of, of our pod, uh, which includes our container that's going to be running and some environment variables. It also contains the user, the name of our container that will be running, user container count, and the service account that will be used to run our container and therefore our service, which right now is empty because we'll be using the default service account. Next, we, next we have the replica set that says we're gonna be running one instance of our application. And then more importantly, we have here annotations, which normally Kubernetes ignores. You can think about it as comments for us humans uh, at very high level. And in this case, I put in here compose, which is the application I used to generate this file instead of writing it manually. And I put the version that I used so that if I want to regenerate this file, I, I can just look this up. And finally, we see the deployment that wraps everything up and it's named user service deployment that will create everything else for us. And that's the basics of what you deploy to Kubernetes. So now that we know a little bit more about Kubernetes, let's create our service account first. And this is a much simpler <laughs> YAML manifest, but it's a YAML manifest nevertheless. And you can see that this one is of type service account. And more importantly, you can see that this is named GoTemp user service, which is the same name of the service account that we created or we provided to our vault manifest when we we're creating the role. And that's how we're gonna create our service account. Next and very important are annotations. Now these custom annotations, they're all start with vault.hashicorp.com. And our first line here basically says to our agent injector to actually process our file. The second says that it needs to create an init container. So this setup script that we talked about. And the next two lines are very interesting because they basically say, use the, the role Kubernetes role that we created, the GoTemp user service role, to pull information for the secrets from our NATS user service secret and create a new file called NATS.txt. And if we stopped at that point, it would create, take the raw data from our secret and, create, and put it in that NATS.txt file. But that's not very useful for application because we would have to uh, format it. So instead I'm gonna go use a template to format it here. And what's gonna happen here is gonna take the data from our secret and gonna create a string that's gonna be export microbroker address and equals, and it's gonna take our username from our secret, colon or password and add sign server. And you can tell just by looking at this, that this is the command that's used to create an environment variable. So what's gonna happen at the end of the day, this nats.txt file will have this 
command here, and then we'll execute that command by sourcing the file, and that will create our environment variable. And those are our annotations. Now, one thing that you're probably thinking, right? Well, you told us that you're not gonna change any of the existing file, and here you're changing the user deployment. Well, I'm gonna leave that alone, and I'm gonna actually create a patch. And this patch will be used by Kubernetes along with the, de the original deployment to, to create a new version of the deployment in memory, and it will apply that, and it will contain both the original code plus our patch statements. So what will this patch look like? Well, it will contain our annotations that we just discussed. It will contain our service account name. And that's once again, the name that we provided in our role that we created in Vault. And lastly, for our user service container, it's gonna add that additional portion to the command used to start our application. So our service usually starts by running this binary user server out, but we'll add a source command just before that. So source our nats.txt file, which will execute the contents of the file and actually create our environment variables. And that's the patch. So at the end of the day, what should happen is we're gonna push our user deployment or restart that user deployment with our patches that will contain our new annotations and service account information. The agent injector will use that information to look up our role, which will allow us to look up our policy and which will allow us to pull up our secret. Once it has the secret, it will create an init container. It will, that init container will once again create that secret file with our values for our environment variables that then our application will be used in, to connect to the database. So let's see that in action. I come here and I can see here in Kubernetes, this is the Kubernetes dashboard. And I can see that our user service is running. It's green, check mark. But more importantly, we can see the pod that's running our container and the container is running our code. And I can see that that's actually done here. That's our user service. And I can see the typical annotations that uh, I showed you at the beginning. So the compose annotation. And more importantly, at the bottom, we have the list of containers running inside this pod, which is our user service container. And that's what's running currently. So now let's deploy our service account and patch. So I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna put, this is our file that contains our service account. And this is the file that contains our patch, but I've added not only the NATS information here, but also the Postgres information here so that it will have two files with correct uh, connection strings. So let's run those two files. And I'm gonna do that by running two commands. The first one is kubectl. So this is how we interact with Kubernetes in general. And I'm gonna say apply, which means create or update whatever is in this file. And this is our file that contains our service account. The second command is basically the same, is also related to Kubernetes and it's saying Kubernetes patch our user service deployment and use the patch that's in this file, which is the file that we just looked at. All right, so let's create a service account and patch our deployment. Come down here. And in the host, I'm gonna run those two commands. And we can see that it's created our service account and our patch has been applied. So if I come up here, back in our, our dashboard, I can see that our user service is restarting. Our user service is restarting and now it's running. If I go inside of that, but I can see that we now have the additional annotations, all our HashiCorp annotations. If I go down to the list of containers, I can see now we have our user service container running the custom command 
that we wanted to run that will source our environment variables. And we also see the init container that has populated the file with the secrets. So now I should be able to log in to our pod and see those files. So that's what I'm going to do now. And I'm going to run another Kubernetes command. So therefore, it's a kubectl command. And I'm going to tell it to let me open a session into that uh, container. And if I do ls, we can see our binary. And then if I do ls bold secret, I can see the two files that should have been created. Now, if I take a look at one of them, and this is, let's say, the Post Postgres one, and we can see that it's generated the connection, the environment variable command with our connection string. Excellent. And same thing for the NATS file. So now we accomplished all of this. We have our new container with a secret file and the application has uh, pulled it up. And at this point, you're probably thinking, yeah, yeah, yeah. How do we know that it actually worked? And that's a very good point. So let's try it. I'm going to come back here and I'm going to log in into, into Postgres. So I'm logging into Postgres here. And if I pull from the application user table, we come back with three records. And more importantly, I'm going to change the password to hashi 2021. And now if I restart our application, that's running Kubernetes, and I'm going to run a command. Basically it says, Kubernetes, restart the rollout of my user service deployment. I'm going to run that, and we're going to see our application get restarted. Now remember, I've changed the password in the database, but I have not changed it in my application yet. So right now we're waiting for the pod you need to finish and our application is our service is running. I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna try to log in again. And now it says that user is not found because it hasn't been able to connect to the database. So let's go to vault. And I'm gonna go to one of my secrets. So in particular, the secret for our database, for our Postgres database, for our user service. And I'm gonna change that password. I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna copy that because otherwise I will probably fat finger it. Copy this guy, Hashi2021. Come here, create a new version of our secret so I can edit it. Delete this old password. And then I am going to save it. All right, so it's saved. Now I'm going to come to our command line and I'm going to do the rollout restart to restart our service one more time. Let's make sure it restarts properly. So let's give it a second. And we, will, we can see that it's initializing. And now it's running. So now I'm going to come back to our application. Hit submit. We were able to log in. Now let's make sure that we can actually pull some users. And there we go. We have some users. Excellent. So now you're probably thinking though, well, do I really want to restart my application every, one, every time I change my passwords? And the answer is probably no. So we can change that easily. In one of our annotations, we had created this particular one and we had set it to true. However, if we set that one to false, it will not only create the init container that populated initially that file with our secrets, but it will also create a sidecar container whose only job is to every now and then go to uh, Vault, pull the updated 
secrets and repopulate our shared file. So our application, if our application is configured to review those files, can recreate the password and re-log in. That way you don't have to restart your application every time. And at this, this point, Jen is very happy with all the changes we've done for her. And what else could she implement? Well, she could automate the deployment of the patches with this in the CI CD pipeline, or she could integrate the patches into the application deployments. And she should also put the database credentials on the work ball control to further centralize everything. But at the end of the day, what we've seen is that we can centralize all our credentials and that it was easy to set up and that we can do this with new or existing applications in a way that's scalable. So we don't have to go looking for configuration files or environment variables all over the place. It has a very low barrier to entry because our developers can continue to do what they've done so far. And all we need to do is create some patches or change the annotations in the existing uh, YAML file. And this is easy to script and automate. At the end of the day, this allows our teams to be less busy and focus on creating more awesome. And at this point, I'll open the floor to any questions. You have absolute perfect timing. I am applauding you silently in my heart. Uh, also, I'm Jane, so if you ever need me to do a, a photo shot, a headshot or anything, just so I can be Jane in your next presentation of that, let me know. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed that. Before you head to YouTube chat, someone in YouTube chat um, wanted to know if they could, if you could share your GitHub, uh, GitHub repo. I think they found it, but if you don't mind while you're chatting with people, could you yeah. place the link to your GitHub repo in there? I will definitely do that. And it's also in the presentation. Uh, let me go over there real quick. I have so many slides. Oh, no there way. We <laughs> there we go. There we go. HTTPS GitHub Canva one uh, got them. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us. All right. Thank you. Have a good one. You too.